investigate an electrochemical cell with a difference. It's different in that we use lemon as our electrolyte, and then we will put in various electrodes inside here and observe what happens. So what I have got is a voltage probe, which will give us an indication of the potential difference. And then we will use different metals or different substances as the electrodes and see what happens. The first one that we are going to use is magnesium. And we've got a pencil here, but actually we are, we are using the substance inside the pencil, which is graphite. Another name for that is carbon. So when I have the positive electrode as the magnesium and the negative electrode as the carbon or the graphite, there's my value for the potential difference. I collect and keep that value. And I will record it as magnesium. So I start with the positive, so it's going to be magnesium carbon. What happens if I swap the electrodes around? What happens if I swap them around? In this case, we have the carbon as the positive electrode and magnesium on the negative. Look at that, right? We keep that result. This time we store it as carbon, magnesium. And I will play around with the various substances and see what happens. We remove the carbon, replace it with an iron nail. Iron on the positive, magnesium on the negative. There's the value for potential difference. I hope you can tell me what that means. Iron, magnesium. We swap them around. This time, the magnesium, positive, and the iron, negative. There's the value for the potential difference. We write it, magnesium, iron. Lastly, let's perhaps change the magnesium, remove the magnesium, replace it with a piece of copper, our cell now has got iron and copper. We've got copper on the positive and iron on the negative. There's the value for the potential difference. Copper, iron. Swap these two around. This time, iron positive, copper negative. There's the value for the potential difference. Iron, copper. We'll stop the collection there. We could play around a bit more. Now, here's a question for you. Number one, explain why there's a difference in the charge when you swap the metals around. When you've got magnesium and carbon, it's negative. Where and whereas when you've got carbon, magnesium, you get a positive value for the potential difference. That's the one question. The other question is, looking at these values for potential difference with these various electrodes, can you work out a reactivity series using the metals that we have just used? And the last question for you would be, for each of these um, little electrochemical cells that we have done, please provide me with the cathode and the anode, the reaction taking place at the cathode and the reaction taking place at the anode. Before we discuss the results, it is important to take note of the fact that when we use the magnesium and carbon electrodes, the reaction is actually between magnesium and the hydrogen ions found in the lemon acid. This is because the carbon electrode acts merely as a shunt, which is merely an auxiliary electrode where the hydrogen ions are reduced to hydrogen gas. But let's have a look at these results. In the case, in all three cases of the different pairs of, of substances used, we have this alternating in the EMF sign. The negative represents the case where the, the reaction is non-spontaneous. In other words, it requires energy for this to occur. The positive values show us when the, the electrodes are in the correct order since this reaction would occur naturally.
We will only do equations for the spontaneous reactions. Let us discuss this in more detail. When the EMF of the cell is positive, this means the reaction is spontaneous. When it is negative, we have a non-spontaneous reaction. This value is an indication of which of the substances used is more easily reduced than the other. For example, when we use magnesium and iron as the electrodes, the EMF of the cell is positive when the magnesium is at the anode and iron is at the cathode. This tells us that it is a spontaneous reaction and that the iron 2 plus ions are stronger oxidizing agents than magnesium. Since in this case the iron 2 plus was found at the cathode and it was reduced, making it a stronger oxidizing agent than magnesium. Let's discuss the results for each of the pairs of substances used as the electrodes. Firstly, let us look at the case when we used magnesium and hydrogen as the electrodes. The, elect the EMF of the cell was positive when magnesium was situated at the anode. In other words, magnesium was oxidized. The oxidation half reaction is given by magnesium loses two electrons to form magnesium 2 plus ions. Hydrogen then is at the cathode and so the reduction half reaction is given by two hydrogen ions gain two electrons to form hydrogen gas. The net equation we obtain by adding the left hand side and the right hand side we get magnesium plus two hydrogen ions react to form magnesium two plus ions and one diatomic molecule of hydrogen. The total cell EMF is given by 2,019 volts. This is a very high number and it is positive. This means that this reaction will occur naturally and is very likely to occur and that magnesium is a greater reducing agent than hydrogen. In the combination of magnesium and iron used as the electrodes, we have a positive value when magnesium is situated at the anode. In other words, it is oxidized. The oxidation reaction is given by magnesium loses two electrons to form magnesium 2 plus ions. The iron is then situated at the cathode and is reduced. Iron 2 plus ions gain two electrons to form iron metal. The net equation is then given by magnesium added to iron 2 plus ions will react to form magnesium 2 plus ions and iron. The cell EMF is smaller than the cell EMF used in the magnesium and hydrogen cell. This shows us that it, this, this reaction between magnesium and iron is less likely to occur in nature. But since it is positive, we can see that magnesium is a, is a greater reducing agent than iron 2 plus ions. Lastly, let's look at the combination where we have copper and iron as the electrodes. When we have iron at the anode, we have a positive EMFs for the cell. This means that the iron is oxidized. Iron loses two electrons to form iron 2 plus ions. The copper then is at the cathode and so the copper, copper 2 plus ions are reduced when they gain two electrons. The net equation then is given by copper 2 plus ions plus iron react to form copper metal and iron 2 plus ions. The EMF of this cell is very small, 0 0,489 volts, which means it is even less likely to occur in nature. It does, however, since it is positive, show us which of the two is a greater reducing agent. In this example, iron is the greater reducing agent 
than the copper 2 plus ions. In conclusion, the positive EMF value indicates a spontaneous reaction with the electrodes in question. A low positive EMF value just tells us that there is a lesser tendency for the reaction to occur, but it is still spontaneous. Values for the EMF of the cell will not be the same as tables that are standardized since the measurements are not taken at the standard temperature and pressure. A reactivity series from least reducing ability to most can be established as follows. Out of these four, copper is the least, has the least reducing ability, hydrogen has more, iron has even greater, and magnesium has the greatest reducing ability. This means that copper is very easily reduced, whereas magnesium is very easily oxidized.